grain of rice. A, a, a grain of rice. It's going to tip the scale. Just remember that, then. There's a small bit of a needle there. Now, come on, Mayo. You've got to get Andy Moran into the game. Our mission was to show that we're no longer the whipping boys of Munster. Morning, folks. How are you all? Uh, we're, we're bright and early this Monday morning, so you'll excuse a few uh, gravelly voices around the place. Um, we're not usually this early. We like a mid-morning start on a Monday to ease our way into things. <laughs> but um, this bar work is getting the better of me, lads, this, this, this late nights. Mark, you shaved and all, in fairness, Joe. Up early, day, the, the early worm. The early, the early bird catches the worm, Dale. So, I was in the cut out. right nearly. I left. I'm not feeling great, I can tell you, know, long, long shift last night and we had the second shift to the catch around <laughs> afternoon to late, so it was a struggle this morning. You were late, get, I, at, least you were late I, at least I'm not have to lose the county final like, like the other poor man there on the, the camera. <clears throat> I was, go- Thanks, I was going to try and- I-, I was going to try and ease him into it, but uh, oh, straight uh, in with the boot, typical Anders. <laughs> typical, <laughs> typical Cork Hoggy. Uh, joined by Brian Hogan. Great to have you, Hoggy. Tough old morning to come on with us, but fair play. You said on Thursday you come on, and you came on. Are you a bit shook there, kid? Um, yeah, I've had better mornings, but um, I ah, look. I was hoping to be coming on celebrating. A victory in the Tom Welch Cup and coming back to the club and everything, but it wasn't to be, unfortunately. But uh, I look, I'm sure we'll get into it. But you know, uh, it was Jesus, I don't know. I was sitting in the stand for about 15 minutes after we're trying to fi- just figure it out because the lads had heard so well, done so many things right, you know, and still to come up short by four points. It's just but, unbelievable, you know, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Great game to watch, I have to say. Um, the Tom Welch Cup, I thought you might have it on there in the background because. You know, like if the likes of Gary Spillane won it, it would be definitely appearing in the background there uh, inside in the cube. How are things, Tej? Great, Delo, great. I, unlike you guys, I wasn't pulling points. I wasn't commentating the matches or at county finals. I was on easy street on the coach. So I was able to take a lot of sport in. So, yeah. And um, I was going to say that the reason we're late or early this morning is it looks like Mark shaved, looks like there's somebody paying, I'd say, later on in the day. <laughs> there's, he's there's, gonna, a, there's, he, a, is he, there's a big client uh, going to be messed sometime during the day, isn't there? Yeah, but like, come here, he's, he, that's the reason we're on so here. He's gone off cleaning out some poor lad and then he's gone off buying horses for the next yeah. two days. Like. Sell it. Exactly. Huh? Sell, it, sell it this week, Dela. The tats. Sell it. Yeah. Starting today, the caution, today. The caution run. The caution run over the weekend. No, none, 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 none. none run up. None run up. Grove went against them. Head so went we, against um, them. Yeah, we uh, we got a bit of a black type over the weekend. All right, uh, Brand Ree, uh, Brand Roy is what he's called. He ran in Navin in the Grade Two, finished third. They led actually over the last, and um, we'd be happy enough from Garden and it trains him. Davy rode him, so with the half sister, I was looking forward to walk in the park. Um, got a stroke a look, of, um, didn't you? Huh? You got a stroke a look because if Lord Porter didn't fall at the second last, you wouldn't have been covered like so. Probably <laughs> not. No, you need, you need, you need the brakes. TJ, it's all about luck, boy. It's all about luck, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you and if I tell you, if you, if you if you fell out of Burton's window, you'd land in a suit, <laughs> 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 Um So, TJ, you were just taking it all in. Did you watch Liverpool yesterday evening? <laughs> I watch the second half. Yeah. I got I tell a hoagie, you you got it, you got it half I said no TJ, you're after getting the voices half. I did. I got in fairness and they sent me text yeah, sent me text last night to know that I get to see much during the day, so I give him the full rundown of my day. I told him what I see and I, I watched the full check any final. Very enjoyable match to watch. A neutral and all person for you, Hoggy. I got to see uh the game in Cork. I got I liked it the first one on, on the younger page, which is great. I saw all the refs in heaven, and I saw the second half of Liverpool and West Ham. That was my Sunday. Uh, the bat. Do you have any time for the dinner? I got that in the middle, in fairness to Louise. She, she looked at me during the day, yeah. Can't complain, no. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So, um... Yeah. The day frozen. He's back. He's, got, yeah. he's going again. He's going again. <laughs> 
But um, how's the race like in Nevin, TJ? Good. Garden Elliott's a couple of nice young horses there coming, like they're all, they're, they're all coming up. Willie hasn't played his hand yet, like so. The season is right. set up nice now. I'd say the two of them will have a fair rattle off each other as as the, as the, um, the season goes on. But yeah, pretty he good. launched a nice ju- juvenile on Saturday as well. Is it TP2 beat Quilliots by eight or ten lengths? Well, he's he's actually in open class now with T Hoopo, yeah. So one to, one to watch for the coming season. But yeah. the, the the point I was going to make to you guys this morning is. Uh, I, this was a conversation I had with a guy called Tom Maloney during the week, right? We were talking about GAA TV, right? And it struck me yesterday. So racing has its own full-time channel covering racing in Ireland and the UK. And actually, on a separate note, before I forget about it, is watch the Breeders' Cup as well, Mark, on Friday night and Saturday night in Del Mar. Great job. Actually, on Saturday night, told yourself it's going on the list. Of things to do and going to get there in the next couple of years that is the plan but to go to go to go back to plan a right is there a case to be made for G- GAA TV? i'd say it's only a matter of time tj i, I you know I, I i'd say look at watching the stream and you know and i've been like i even showed the Clare county football final down the pub yesterday I paid my tenor and I just clicked in the smart TV and I, uh, the attendance in Murty's Lounge yesterday was better than it would be, I'd say, as, at half two on a Sunday. You know, lads, come out. They could watch it at home, fair enough, but they, I would have had a pint, sat down, watched it. The townies in a row beating Kilmurray, I brick in. Um, and, you know, people enjoyed it. Like, and I, I'd say it's a matter of time. I think the one thing I was going to say, teacher, when I was thinking about all this last night, and, um, God, we've nothing to fear from the split season, lads, if we promote the club stuff. 100%. I mean, it's so much entertainment. Like, I, I really think that. Now, watching yesterday, obviously put up an old tweet there that I turned down your man there in the top left when he started talking about the little la la um, <laughs> And I watched the Kenny final. I had him on. I just turned it down. I could hear Shani McGrath, right? But I turned your man off. I couldn't go up. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... I mean, what a what a day is entertainment like, you know. So Savage. I think pr- properly, properly, um, and TJ Cahar do a brilliant job, obviously, but properly marketed and and and, and um, put out there. I think, Jesus, next year when the All Ireland is over at the end of July, we have a savage club campaigns going ahead. But then I think to give like probably true maybe support to the different tiers in like um, the hurling, like the <coughs> McCarthy all the way down to the Christie Ring, we say Laurie Mar, all, all, all the competitions there, right? And even for the footballers, when they eventually make the right decision that they know and go junior, intermediate, and senior, like to give all those competitions the time. And then when you come to the other side of it, like you take yesterday, things like the Leash County Final, maybe the Westmead County Final, even yeah. the County Final in Armagh, right? To at least have them on over a period of time that everybody can see them. And around the country, everybody will get to see the amount of content because the GEA has more content than racing, let's be fair. And if you want to look back and stuff, and in fairness, there at night, even on racing TV, if you happen to miss, miss the racing during the day, Mark, or if you were commentating on two matches, yeah. you, you can come home and there's a full replay and then you can get to watch all the big festivals over and over again. So, yeah, I would say, no, as you said, TG4 do a brilliant job. Like yesterday, to see the Kilkenny final and the coverage, fantastic. My Irish is improving every weekend. And <laughs> only, only for them, only for them, we'd struggle. No, the streaming is definitely helping as well. But if you can't pay... A ten or whatever money or twenty quid to watch every single game, Dello. So I'm mm. saying GA TV. I pay whatever the thirty, whatever one or two quid a month it is for racing TV because we watch it every whatever every day. And it's kind of it. Is, is there a bit of extortion in that now? I know you're a massive fan, like, but I was bullying with Irish racing when they went over to that crowd. <laughs> there is, there is, but I suppose. The, the the reality is when you when you have this argument with people in racing, they'll come and say it's a Euro a day. That's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I know. That's the, yeah. that's, the, that's the argument and, back. Do you know what I mean? And, and to be yeah, fair, Dale, you're, you're getting a, a huge amount of races, you're getting a huge amount of tracks in the UK and in Ireland as well. And the commentary is yeah. excellent. Like Jane Mangan, Ruby, all Ruby, those people, yeah. you know, the voice, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. They're brilliant stewards <coughs> of the game now. Well, yeah, yeah. Here's a question back at you, Dale, right? Would you pay 30 euros a month? For a specific GA television channel that literally had everything up and down the country, all at different times, like would you pay yeah. thirty euros more? So I've, I've paid about GA? I've I've paid about fifty since the first of October. I'd say for yeah. ten or yeah. ten or here and ten or there, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, look, I, there's no doubt about it. And I know from Marty's point of view, and I know now they're going in on the Dublin final. 
RTR on next Saturday evening from Parnell. Should be great game. Crokes and Nafina. Liam Rush inspired Nafina this year as well. We'll toss up now, see who'll win that. But um, uh, they just can't get in, you see. Like, TG Carr have the first rights. Yes. But a lot of county boards don't want to let them in, TJ, because, you know, like, do you, do, does the attendance fall as a result? And um, I know they'd pay something to get in mm. or whatever. They would pay uh, how many thousands? I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of that. But it's, see, TG Carr have the first rights. So it's hard to get a good game and see fairness to the Dublin County Board. I suppose they were willing to switch the hurling final to a Saturday evening. So not a count, you know, Limerick are not going to do that probably. Um, I know you did with your football. You played on a Friday evening, did you? Yeah. But I know in Clare now there'd be a strong resistance to not playing the hurling final at, on a Sunday afternoon. Kilkenny, yeah. Kenny, I take it, the same Cork. Yeah. Two weeks' time, Mark, confirmed already, isn't it, for the yeah. final? Yeah. And yeah, they're actually going to play the uh, Premier Senior Final and the Senior A Final in a double header, Anthony, which should right. draw a really, really good crowd and make a great occasion for us. Larry, you can just check out that later on before you let the show out live because it's a Landers rumour. So <laughs> <laughs> we need to be very careful with those things as the year has shown us. How is Austin Gleeson's leg, I wonder? <laughs> Still there, I remember. Come here to me. I, you, you'd, be, you'd be talking about our fellas listing, right? So I happened to get joined in the commentary position by Joe Blake, yesterday, the PRO of the Cork County Board, who slipped me a lovely note. Now, I kept the note, okay, just to prove, Okay. You can see that there. Just, Just for, for a point of reference on the podcast. Yeah. From Crow Park. What's that say? County senior co- finals should be 20 euros. <laughs> entry fee. At a minimum. At a minimum. <laughs> so my we'll call out last week for a tenor has been blown out of the boat because Crow Park have given a directive that county finals must be at least 20 euros. Someone someone yeah. put up a tweet yesterday. Um, I think Ewan McKenna pointed out the, the controversial Ewan McKenna on Twitter pointed out that the Kildare County final was 22, 22. quid 22. for football for the, for the minor and senior 22 quid. Right. Something I said to his extortion, like you know, but, uh, yeah, well, well that's if, crop, if, crop if, hair, if, tell him they have to do it, I suppose. Well, hands are tied, but if we get two county finals for 20 quid, that's a tenor game as far as I'm concerned. I'd be very happy with that. Yeah, and I'll have to say this, I must commend the Kilkenny County Board and I hope Cork County Board will take on the same mantra for the county final by leaving in 2,000 frontline workers for free. I'd be strong on that now that I thought it was a great initiative from the Kilkenny County Board <clears> and it's something that a lot of county boards should take on board because what the frontline workers have done for this country over the last two years is second to none. They're, they've put their lives on the line every day of the week, 24-7, and they're not half appreciated enough for what they have done for us. And it's only a small talk and a small gesture. And I hope the Cork County Board will follow the Kilkenny County Board's lead. Well said, well said, yeah. Well said. You're hitting all the right notes, notes these weeks. I tell you, by the, the listeners are loving it out there. By oh, we give it, we're giving you that. <laughs> Ogie, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have you since um, the groundbreaking news of your old teammate um, going up to Galliv. Um, and we only had Ken Hogan on the show. Shem McGrath had to cry off last week. So, um, where should we all we spoke about it in the surprise and, and the surprise here in Clare because we thought Davy had the job got, which he came in and wiped our eye as Shefflin has done on many occasions. But, um, what's the reaction like on the ground, Hoggy? Like, I see him at the county final there yesterday, but like, is it a feeling that Jesus, what are we doing here? Letting you know, one of our best coaches, letting one of our you know, greatest ever sons or whatever off up to Galway to beat us or is there a feeling on the other point of view that he could be doing a little apprenticeship in Galway he's done it with Belly Hill and Thomastown and now he's going into dipping his toes into Intercounty and when we get him back we'll have uh, real real um, you know five star Intercounty manager yeah um, I think we were all surprised we're now <clears throat> we're in a WhatsApp group there is a group of us and he was on it and we were we were discussing the uh the potential Galway um, selection of uh, their new managements, and uh, I think he, there was one line from, um, "Yeah, interesting." Da, 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 something. <laughs> that was his sole contribution. Looking back at it, I was like, "Yeah, fecker." And uh, the first, I, the first I got wind of it was my brother actually texted me. He said, "Hey, is there any truth in it?" He was looking to head down to the bookies to try and put a few quid on. <laughs> 
And I just, I was like, Jesus, do you know something now? It wouldn't surprise me. He actually was very quiet, you know, and then about a half an hour later, he, he just pulled up in the WhatsApp to look, lads, just let you know. And uh, unfortunately, the brother didn't get down in time to the bookies. They actually they weren't taken. <laughs> so, um, the, the, the general, well, the mood in Kilkenny seems to be one of um, support towards his decision to go up to Galway. You know, there's very much a goodwill towards Henry and, and his decision. There's no kind of like sense of, oh, what's he going up, you know, train in a rival county or anything like that. I think there's a sense yeah. that like, Look, there's nothing going to really change here for for, for you know in, in the short term, and and it's a good opportunity for him. And yeah, anyone I was talking to, you know, obviously they don't want to see him go to beat us, but you know they'd, they'd like to see Henry do well. You know, he's he's given so much to the county and that kind of thing. So yeah, no, there's a general sense of uh, it's a good move for him. Um, I think you know we've all spoken about Galway and, and the potential there, and you know um, it, it's a good opportunity for him and and, and that's so. Yeah, no, there's, there's, there's no, certainly no kind of negative, um, if you like, sentiment towards towards Henry going up to uh, to take on the role. It'll certainly be, it'll certainly make the Leinster Championship a lot uh, even more interesting now. You know, you've seen the memes mm. going around to the different uh, heads that superimposed, you know, Squid, uh, himself and Brian squaring up and whatever. We could have it in reality now in a couple of months' time. But um, mm. yeah, look, it's he was sitting, he was actually just sitting down in front of me at the match, and I think he was up, was he up in Galway? The day before, Saturday. and yeah, yeah, you know, so he's already clocking the miles up now, you know. And himself and Richie were up there, Richie Nail, who's been with him in a couple of his managerial roles. Richie from Kilmacow, he would have been in with us with Kenny, he was a goalie, and you know, he's a good, shrewd kind of reader of the game. So, um, and I think he's see, it's announced, I think, is uh, Joyce is coming in with him as a selector from Capital. I don't know, is that is that a official, um, it's official, yeah. Yeah, I know they were in college together in WT. I know even when we would have been playing Galway, the lads would have been tally, you know. So again, someone he probably trusts. He's I know who's been you know involved in the club scene up in in, in Galway for the last number of years, both player and, and coach. And so yeah, it'll you know um, it'll it's a big job, it's a huge job. You you know there's a there's a you know but I'm sure look he, look Henry is a true character. He was he he wouldn't have gone into this. He wouldn't have taken this on unless he felt. You know, there was there was he could make it make it, you know, give a good return on it. So yeah, could be interesting uh, there. He's, he's learning the words of the West's awake as we speak. <laughs> 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 TJ, obviously your 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 these selectors are announced and uh Hoagie's right, uh Joycey. Uh, and Jesus, I know they're Pelly from college, but, but Jesus, anytime I saw the two of them, anyway, I don't know and spare or anything. Uh, but that's just that Danny Joyce top low. But obviously, TJ, we are going to have all the first hand news about hamstrings and comebacks from Joe Canning and everything because Kevin Lally is gone in as he's the other right hand man. Kevin, obviously, huge success with yourself, three in a row. Um, with Thomas as uh, All Ireland minor, uh, with Galway as well. And, and um, it's it's he'll know the scene, he'll know. There's there's transition in Galway, like and we, we mentioned that the last day, isn't there? Like because look, Joe has retired. Obviously, there's a few as I see Aidan Hart in fairness team said if I'm I'm if I'm picked, I'm available. Um so there is transition, so the, the two boys will very much know what needs to be done. Yeah, it's super exciting, I think, for Galway. I think that Kevin is delighted to be part of Henry's team. Um for me, looking from the outside, it's 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 great. I, I mentioned the county board must be literally licking their lips. They've put a beautiful management team together. I think if you're a player in the modern era in Galway, I'd say you'd be mad for road, mad to get in with Henry and Richie. Like Damien Joyce and Kevin will know the scene inside Galway, like really, really, really well. Like, right? Um yeah. you've always said there's an awful lot of players there, Dale. We know that. But to what you said there, there is some form of I won't say it's not a rebuild, but maybe a restructure. Like there's no Joe, like what are the six forwards going to look like? Um, who are going to be in the key positions? Like we've seen Dahi Brock this year playing at centre back. Like getting that centre spine for Galway is crucial. Getting that right. We know that loads and loads and loads of hurlers. Your buddy, you'll be delighted, Marco. I had a very good semi final on Saturday. Evan Nyland, he scored 13 points. Um, is it four to play? Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been beating this a long time. Yeah, no. <laughs> But there's, there, there is, there's, a big, there's definitely a big challenge. But I think for the hurling world, certainly for Galway in terms of the county board and the structure they put together, and then lastly for the players, I think if you're a Galway player, this is exciting. This is something different. Like the buy-in will be huge here. 
And as Brian said there, let's we'll know we'll know very shortly in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months' time. What what I just had a brief conversation with Kevin, um, and obviously he's delighted. But it's going to happen quick because we're November now, right? And you remember, yeah. Is is the actual Ireland final date set for twenty twenty two? I think it's the last Sunday in July. Well, the second last, I'd say, in the football, the last. <laughs> Football the last. So think, if you take I the think. Ireland final, yeah, I think the, the, the Ireland final is the second last Sunday in July, right? That's the end of it, right? So this is all going to happen very, very quick. I think the first mm. round of the championship is potentially the last week in April. Is that right? Yeah, well, you know, even the Tip County final hadn't even been played and we were on a weekend away there. Well, I, I could only stay Friday night now with the old Dublin management. Yeah. We get together there and we weren't able with COVID. Obviously, we went to Bill Mullet for a couple of nights. I only went the Friday night, but Tommy, Tommy Dunn couldn't come to the following day because Tip were getting together on a meeting. Now, whether it was a management meeting or players meeting and asking, but just, just goes to show you, it's on. I mean, your county final hadn't even been played, and you're, you're, you know, you're in it. You're in it now straight away because uh, 2022 is going to happen quick, like between league and, and into the mm-hmm. championship. So, as I just, it's, 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 it, it'll be, it'll be interesting, but definitely exciting for Hurling. Good to see Henry on the line. Definitely will be interesting to see Henry and Cody on the line. There's no doubt about that, Sean. Yeah. Well, it's definitely that. it's definitely going to happen with their own Robin. Like they're, they're in Salt Hill, aren't they? It's it's definitely, it, yeah. yeah, and probably good chance they might meet again in Leinster final. And who knows, they could meet again. Uh, we, uh, yeah, yeah. We should do we should do we should do the podcast from Salt Hill that weekend, shouldn't we? Oh, Jesus, I'd, we'd want to be we'd want to be doing these podcasts on a, a Sunday evening after the match. Sunday evening after the match in Salt Hill. How bad, Because huh? if, we, if we stay in Salt Hill for the night for the podcast, <laughs> we'd want to be put back till about one o'clock in the day. In the morning, we're up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, great stuff, look, it's good to get the inside uh, track, Hoggy, on with Henry. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I'd say there would be always goodwill to what Henry would attempt in Kilkenny. That's a, you know, but I just still feel if. If Kikini folk are coming out of Croker, beaten four or five points by Galway in the Leinster final, and Shefflin has pulled a couple of master strokes, there'll be an element yeah. of, of uh, why do I, why do we let him over there, lads? You know. But anyway, yeah, um, look, that's that's the nature of it. Uh, actually, you know, he's I suppose he, he he has to do what he has to do. absolutely. Like when it comes down to it, the whole tribal thing next you know next April or whatever it is we're playing and come out the wrong side of it. <laughs> it won't be like a fair play to Henry, you know. You be yeah. at the same time, you know. He's uh, you know. I think it's I think it's a good move for him. I think that that's the general sense is that you know um, it's a good opportunity for him. Um, you know, but look, once once they cross the white line, they'll be no, you know, they'll be no. Um, yeah, I brought I brought the, I brought. It, uh, go on, Mark. Sorry, I was going to say like that, that. You have Michael Fenley now doing a very good job above an Offaly and Eddie Brennan obviously did a very good job in Leash and. Okay, came unstuck in, in Cooler, but certainly would be bang up there. And David Herity as well as involved. Like you four coaches at the front line now. Like there's a bit of succession planning, I'd say, also going on in Kilkenny at the moment. Whenever Brian decides to leave the scene, well, planning now, I don't know. Um, might be a bit stronger word, but certainly the lads of the lads of you know, I suppose they're. They're getting the experience, you know, whether whether it's inside the county or outside. But look, look, the hurling circles. It's a small, it's a small environment, you know. I mean, I don't personally see an issue with with, with going out beyond the borders, you know, whether that's training clubs or or or, or you know or, or, or counties. I mean, it's a it's a small circle. You're, you're you're pulling, you're trying to pull information and from 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 all sources, you know. And there's and various is always a great exchange of kind of you know train who's doing what, you know, what type of training, and it's it, it drives everyone on. So I'm um, look. I've no doubt Henry would be in a different outlook to things that maybe a lot of the Galway players would have been exposed to before. The one thing, like Henry, would be meticulous in terms of the way he'll want things organised. He'll very much allow, you know, his backroom team to do their thing, whatever you know, in terms of their different areas of expertise. And he won't want any fuss. You know, he won't want any commotion. The, the quieter he can keep it, the happier he'll be. That's just the way he'll go about it. You know, now mm. easier said than done, obviously, but. You know, certainly there won't be a media circus following him around. You know, he'll be looking to just keep it as low profile as possible. And you know, and as as TJ said, like there's not a huge amount of time until the championship comes through, and there is certainly a bit of transition there because you know, and TJ will know better than me. But within the club scene, all these young players that are there, how many of them have put their hands up? You know, over the last number of years, it's easy to say they need to throw these lads in. But from what I understand, a lot of the, the standout players. In the Galway Championship, still seems to be the likes of your Davy Burks and these guys who've been there and done it. So, you know, um, Henry will, there won't be any sentiments. You know, he'll come in, he'll just go, look, 
I don't care what age you are, if, if, or, you know, what experience you have, if you're doing it, you're doing it, you know, show me what you can do and I'll pick on form. And I suppose that'll probably be the, the way he'll look to try and approach. It's a great opportunity for, for the players. Mm. And I tell you, Hoggy, I, I brought the dubs down in tennis uh, for a championship match, crucial championship match in 12, and I didn't get a single ounce of abuse uh, from the crowd. But I'd say that was helped seriously by Claire winning the game. <laughs> <laughs> they, were all, they were all commiserating with me afterwards, which sure, is great. You'll be able to shout for Claire now for the rest of the year. So, yeah, look, good ones to look forward to. Are we stay in Kilkenny, obviously. I was going to say, Taylor, is Davey okay? We were, talking, we were talking to him, is he okay after not getting the job and stuff? Did you have an old chat about it and stuff? No? No, I haven't talked to him, no. I haven't talked to him, no. I did, he'd be going. Sure, he was on. He said, on the end of late, late, just straight away after yes. Friday night, sir. Sure. And he said, sure, that best look to Henry. And okay. no more about it, you know. But, uh, I'd say he thought he had it though, that talking to a couple of people, they thought that he was fairly sure on the Monday evening. Yeah, seemed to be heading that way all right for sure, didn't it? But yeah, I was, I was even wondering, did you have an old shoot the breeze on us and see where it was going? But yeah. Can they call it the Morty, uh, Dale, to wish you luck now? It's a matter of interest. I don't think he drinks at all, Mark, does he? I don't know. I think, is he off it, is he? I think he's off it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure if Taylor's Wi Fi went there or if he just cut us yeah, off. Yeah. <laughs> that's the question. Cut, yeah, that's the question. Yeah. But, um, take the breeder. Yeah, what? Um, I was going to say, uh, Dale was going to get on to Kilkenny there shortly, but just to close out in Galway, first of all, the two semi finals were supposed to be on in Galway the weekend, right? So, the second semi final between Garth and St. Thomas wasn't played on Sunday due to a COVID issue. And the only final, which Henry was at, Brian, on Saturday, uh, Karen Bridge were comfortable enough mm. winners. Uh, they beat Crockwell 318 to 114. So they're back in the final for the first time since 2011. Um, and as I said, uh, Marco Evan Nyland was leading the charge. Like So in interesting. Good, he? he was, yeah. Centre forward. Centre forward. And Henry would have been watching that, yeah. And I said, he finished with, like, out of the 318, he finished with North 13. And I think it was about four points he got from play. I think seven frees, two sixty fives. He's deadly from play right. as well as in fairness. Yeah. So yeah, like I know you he's were a very good that, talent teacher. You were beating that drum, yeah. But he's been around a while, like and so as I said, he just hasn't broken onto the scene and nailed down a yeah. position. No, maybe that was because of Joe. And like obviously, when when Joe Canning's available, he's got to play. Like, but um, in fairness to Evan, I, I would say that he'd definitely be one of the players now. That would be mad keen to kind of impress Henry here and maybe get an attack built around him certainly for for twenty twenty two. But you you'd often you often find TJ that a player kind of knows himself that the manager is either going to pick him or he's not going to pick him. And I was very surprised when he was left off the team for the first championship match. But when he was and Galway were very poor that day. <laughs> but when he was left off the second day, I just said to myself, oh "My God, that's that's a that was a big shot now." Um, and, and I felt that Galway didn't play well. It didn't, and I often find that the players themselves know kind of who should be on and who shouldn't be on. And sometimes they react by not performing, maybe not not meaning to do it that way, but it's their heart or the stomach isn't in us. Sometimes when the right team isn't picked. So yeah, well, I said he's he's responded in the best possible fashion for himself and anyway, by leading his club back to a county final for, so for the first time in a while. So. Um, yeah, so as I said, he'll be mad keen, and Henry would have seen it firsthand. Dale, we just touched on the two Galway semi finals. Sorry, lads. And yeah, no matter Sorry, have it. And, just having a bit and, of Wi Fi trouble. Yeah, and we touched, we thought you just dodged the question, to be honest. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't talking to him. TJ was the end. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, uh, we just, yeah, we, we chatted about the two Galway semi finals. There, one played, one not played, and said, um, yeah, so we, we, we've that covered. So you were just about to hit the Pick any county final, so we'll, we'll we'll let you off. I was, I was. Um, really enjoyed it, I have to say. Uh, no consolation to you, Hoagie, that was a very enjoyable game for the neutral, as TJ said. Oh. Um, just couldn't believe. I did write down early on, I'd say it was just after the first water break, maybe five minutes into the second quarter, like, I did <coughs> write down, can, can O'Loughlin's keep up this level of intensity? I, won I wonder, was that a factor coming down the stretch? Hoggy, that you had given so much in terms of intensity. I mean, it thought your half back line was unreal. Um, the tackling, Paddy Deegan, which we'll talk about again, the top of the right, as far as I could see, was just <laughs> almost unmarkable. Um, only downside to his day was missing the penalty, but at the same time, he was immense, I thought. And 
you gave an awful lot to the game, and yet <laughs> they, they have such class. Um, I mean, you kept their three marquee forwards, let's say, the big hitters. You kept them desperately quiet. In yeah. Conlon, well, oh, it's TJ Kim. To do the damage, I felt TJ came deep. And, mm. and uh, you know, Owen Reid obviously caught the ball for the goal, first goal, and then Mullen, great flick for the second goal. And then Brian Butler obviously went through the middle. But, like, to do that job and to do as much as you did at the score, three fifteen and still be beaten four points yeah. just shows you, uh, tells you so much about them, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, as you said, scoring three fifteen and still losing, you're kind of sitting there after a match going, how how did it happen? You know, and you're trying to... And look, there's obviously there's different instances during a match. You're saying ifs and buts, there's always, you know, you know, lads, you know, uh, we'll go into it, you know, but I, I think, you're, yeah, you touched on that. I think the last quarter, you know, that... That water break was came at the wrong time for us. We had just, you know, we got a point ahead. We were, we, we had the momentum. They got the water break. They got in. They just settled things down. They came out and they hit us for, was it one, one four, one five, uh, one five. They went eight points up. We didn't, you know, we didn't score in the second, the last fifteen minutes until we got the the point and 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 the the goal cool. Paddy, and, and it just looked like at that point, once they got that opportunity to kind of settle in come out it looked like we were we were tiring particularly around the middle parts of the field you know our two midfielders were, were out on their legs um and in the half forward line they started to they just started to to, to, to win more ball and with tj and nadry mullen having dropped out they were just popping it to them and yeah it just uh it, yeah it was just bloody just disappointing <laughs> because jesus christ like we're look i was looking at it, i said we are flying it and i really felt before the match uh we had a great chance, you know. I, yeah. I thought just with the players I know that, that we have, there are a lot of young lads. I mean, the oldest lad in the backs is Tony. The rest of them are all probably Hughes, the next oldest at 25. So they're all 25 below, you know, and two 20 year olds, loads of hurling ability. And they would have played Bally Hale quite a bit, you know, underage, the likes of Owen Cody and Mullen. And that generation would have come up against a lot of these lads. They would have contested under 20 minor, you know, kind of that age group. So they'd be familiar with each other. But uh, yeah, yeah, it just uh, look they, they're masters at it, you know. They just yeah. they don't panic, and they got their opportunities. Yeah, they got okay. They got the two goals, and fine. We were three points up. They got the two goals when six point or three. They went three points up. We pulled it back, and we went a point ahead. So we responded really well. But just uh, I just felt that last fifteen minutes, we just started to tire a bit, and then a few a few mistakes, you know. Um, Paddy got played a great ball, switched across to the wing. Connor Heary, who was absolutely amazing. Brilliant. He didn't give yeah. everyone the sniff of score two points himself. He, he should have just popped it over the bar. You know, I think we were maybe three points down, four points down. Just get, get a point on the board. Stay with a touching distance. Um, yeah. Again, Mark Bergen had a chance. Just pull it right to the post and wide. If that had gone over, just keep it in. Instead of that, they managed to get the five points ahead and then got the goal. And that was it. It was eight points and it was going to be too much to pull back, you know. Yeah, and the whole Deegan thing, which he, oh, you when when did that start? I mean, I, I wasn't aware of it until the semi final, to be honest with you. And, yeah. And wearing 14, it's just weird looking at him even yesterday mm. when the team sheets came up on TG Gower and you're seeing P. Deegan 14. Um, yeah. Um, the fairness to the management, I think they made the call at the beginning of the year. Um, they felt I, like, you know, you're always a club level, you're always looking at where to position your county players, where can you get the most bang for your buck out of them, you know, and they would have had Hugh fullback, Paddy centre back, Paddy midfield, you know, I mean, he's an engine on him. He'd go all day. But I think there was probably a sense that we needed a bit of a, a, a bit of grunt up in the forwards, you know, a bit of a, a kind of a focal point. You know, we had, we had Goethe for years um, and we haven't had that kind of, and Paddy was happy to do it. And Paddy kind of, the only thing, I was chatting to Paddy a few months ago and he said, listen, as long as I'm left there, I don't want to be chopping and changing and bringing it back, yeah. you know, if it matters. If they're making a decision, leave me up there. And let me work into the position. And he's been absolutely outstanding. Like in any of the games I've watched, like the joke is now that he's played himself. <laughs> he's put his hand up. I tell you, like Cody's been at a couple of the matches. I mean, he's been absolutely outstanding in the quarter final against Mun Labat. Himself and Owen Wall inside were causing havoc. Now the possession dried up and they had to bring him out back out the field. And he came back out the field to midfield and just took over then. But we lost him. We lost his presence inside. He's he, he's a you know you, you've seen him with he's aggressive you know he he intimidates 
uh, some of the backs. There's one game in particular where he did actually intimidate. You know, they were they were they just didn't want to stand in with him. You know, and and in a, in a good way. He's just he's just he'll just stay going. He's you know. So even when he doesn't have the ball, he turns into a back straight away. You see him trying to chase. He made it two or three occasions. He made it like a fart. He was there no, wasn't mm. hope of him getting to hook the ball, but he no one was telling him that. And that kind of sets out, like that kind of sends a kind of signal to the rest of the forwards. Listen, this is the work rate I'm doing. You better row him behind me, kind of, you know. And we got some like Owen Wall made a fantastic hook on TJ there in the second half. And would he have made that yards if Paddy maybe wasn't up there setting the standards? But and then of course throwing the scores he got. You know, like it's one thing going yeah. up there and making a nuisance yourself, but he threw he threw two balls over the bar under the the top of the right down. position there, right? Yeah, seven scores. They're off either side. Scored. I mean, off either side, yeah. One of them, he, he took a, side, a quick sideline. Ball was popped yeah. back to him. And he, he literally just had time just to Split take it in the hand and pop it up and over the bar. And we could tell because there's a big Galactus contingent over the old stand side. There's a there's a crew of, crew of families that always go to that side. And they were roaring. So we could tell it was going over the bar before <laughs> it, it, it nearly, you know, as soon as it left his hurl, they were asking. So we knew, you know, Jesus. Savage scores, you know. The couple, the couple of notes I had, Brian. Yeah, two, two, three just, from play, like. Two, yeah. three from play. And, and he missed the penalty. <laughs> Could have been three, yeah. three. Yeah. But, Brian, just before half time, I suppose, he had five points of a lead. And yeah. maybe the referee might have been a little bit generous with the extra time there in the first half. But yeah. those two scores, like TG got the first one. And then, like, it's just, that's kind of the sign of a real, real quality team. They knew yeah. they just need, need to get one or two scores. And the second thing was, the first goal for Belly Hale in the 35th minute, it was a great opportunity for a point for O'Loughlin Gales going through the middle there, right? Yeah. And that actually ended up being the first goal, which was just a killer blow. But look, you have to credit them as well. Like, I mean, they're just like, there's just so many good players. Yeah. You can keep them quiet for so long. But I knew at the start of the game when I saw the white eyes of Mad Andy and he was just ready for battle. And he just he just got the kind of impression through the TV. Yeah. Then I said, Andy Comerford, you could see the eyes, oh, yeah. the white, the, the championship boys were in his eyes early doors. Like, and it started that way. But, um, yeah, well, look. The other thing, came, sorry, TJ, go on. Yeah, the other thing I was going to talk on before we go is the referee. Jesus, it was hard to get a free deal off. <laughs> I saw, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was writing a piece about it and I was saying, Maybe Kilkenny aren't, aren't quite producing the amount of superstars of the, of the great, you know, the four in a row team and subsequent winners of so many and Cody's heroes, let's say, Hoagie's team. By Jesus, some things have never changed in terms of endeavour and hard fought stuff for freeze and that. Jesus Christ, you'll be killed before you get a free. Yeah, yeah. I, Owen, Owen would have heard himself. He's Johnstown, uh, so JJ's club, you know, to be tough boys out there, but. Um, he, would have, he was a good hurler himself, but um, yeah, look, I mean, I know, look, it wasn't about the ref by any stretch of imagination. I think he, you know, there were certainly cases. I think Hugh came through in the second half, and the helmet was nearly half pulled off, yeah. and, he, you know, yeah. and no free, and they and they got the point off it, and that was the the, the run that they got of those five points. You know, um, I know, I know, Hoggy, you won't condemn now. I know you won't condemn a ref, right? I know that's not your way. You played enough of the Cody refereed games. Like I thought, the Deegan one. For me, was was borderline a red. Like he flicked the ball on, and the uh, the belly hair lad <laughs> didn't stop. <laughs> and the yeah. was high. Uh, yeah. I just thought no, it was a moment. A... It was a moment in the game. It was massive. Yeah, it would have been massive yeah. at the time. And he made a mistake. I, I think he admitted it. Sure, Paddy was mm. caught. He was caught on the nose. I think. I think. I don't know what he obviously thought. Paddy just went down, but like when he went in, Paddy was bleeding. He was clear, and he, he you know, he, uh, he knew he made a mistake. You know, and look, to be fair. You're going to make, you know, you, 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 you'll get someone when you don't get others and you just dust yourself off and you go again. It, it was definitely free and it should be, you know, and it was. But yeah. like TJ mentioned a couple of key moments and there was there were several, like the, the first goal that Bally Hale got where we should have had a point. Even after all of that and after riding the storm of them getting the two goals and, and going for, we going from three points up to three points down and pulling it back on a point up. In, in, in that last quarter, um, we had a great chance for a goal. Paddy Butler got the ball and Joey on the line stopped it and yeah. went straight down the field and they got they got a score i think they got a goal or you know they got a score off it anyway so again another case in point where that would have been game changing for us that would have been the i think just to get it that would have, that would have pushed us on and then to, to stop it on the goal line and go down the other end of the field and punish you that's you know that's that's bally hail you know they're just so, they're just technical like that and, you know, seven, 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 right, it? they do they do i mean they're you probably know, as good a team as coming a long time out of Kenya, aren't they? Just savage. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. And they always have they always have like I mean if you look at like Owen Reed there, Owen is yeah. obviously TJ's brother. I mean, I think Owen has played in I don't know what his record is, it's ridiculous. They've won 
the two four in a row is now in ten county finals. I think he's played in every one of them. Like because in 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 in, in, uh, in certain ones, Henry was injured. He's cruciate. TJ broke his kneecap against. So they've all missed one at the camp. Owen is the only one. He started yesterday. He's the only one that's played in every single one of them over the last since 2006. You know, and you know how many years? Jesus, you're like I most on my career playing against the lads, and you know, and we we were lucky on a couple of occasions, and we got, we got the better of them. But more often than not, you know, and you're, you're targeting TJ or or Henry and trying to keep him quiet and all. And it's the likes of Owen or Mark Aylward or you know, it, they're hurlers across the fields. They might be as well known as the the big household names, but they can all hurl. You know, and to be fair, it's a phenomenal. Like, like it, it, I don't know if you've ever passed through not to offer about it, yeah, like me. Mm. You know, it's 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 a country rural parish. There's not a whole lot there. There's a pub, a shop, and and but like just what they've achieved over the last twenty years, and and you know, it's a relatively young club. I think they're fifty years next year. It's their anniversary. They're on nineteen county titles now. You know. It's, yeah. And and would it, would you think there'd be a feeling that maybe look, I was banging the drum last year in the semi final, um, Huggy that. Kinney needed to put TJ into full forward, needed him full forward, and Jackie was sort of agreeing with me and not agreeing with me, and and I I just thought him going deep, and I I jotted it down at the time, read very deep. But Jesus, the, the damage he did from deep, like I mean, one of the points was just, an, and he let in the ball that that Owen Reid caught the the came to the goal, and like would someone that, like it like a Deegan maybe up there now? You know, around a, a, a Mullen and a known Cody and these guys, would that allow maybe, you know, Cody to just solidly play TJ next year at 11 and let him roam deep? Be a serious option, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, look, TJ is, is class, you know, but he doesn't have the legs that he had five, six, like, I mean, it's obvious, like, we, I've been at county finals where he pick a ball, a ball up on the midfield half, a breaking ball coming off and he's gone and it's a goal chance from 40, 50 yards out. He doesn't have that in his arsenal anymore. But what he does have is he just has that vision, that ability to win ball, that vision, you know, use of the ball. Like he got a point there in the second half. I think Owen won it. So he took it down, ridiculous skill, he took it down on the hurl, played it backwards to TJ, and he had no time, just up in the air, drove straight on over the bar. And, you know, and his intelligence, you know, he dropped out the field, you know, picked up a couple of balls, and then looked, they, they looked to try and isolate, they looked to try and get a matchup, just get someone. And, and Owen is brilliant that on your shoulder, back post, you know, you don't know where he is then, you know, and he gets you, and, you know, directs that. So, yeah, I, 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 TJ, you know, you know, look, not that there's, there'll never be any kind of, uh, in the case setup, never any kind of uh, uh, freedom to say, you don't have to do the hard yards, you just go and, and float around. That just won't happen. But at the same time, I think they need to kind of allow TJ that little bit of freedom to just go and try and dictate the game a bit more. We don't want him in the rooks, you know, if we can, if we can help it, you know, because, he does when he when, when he gets on the ball, things happen. You know whether it's with Bally Hill or with Kenny, it's as simple as that. Um, and yeah, you, and do, do you know the other one that uh, like he would a very solid game, like centre, whether you could allow him. He was, he was out, yeah, he was outstanding. I was chatting to him last. Like, I had I been in that situation with Henry as well, is where they've dropped out the fields, and then do you stick? Do you, do you hold your position, or do you follow him out? And I suppose you know the amount of space that was there, and they were able to exploit that by putting the ball in in front of Owen and 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 and, and Cody and that, but. Really, the problem was that we were tiring out the field so much that the lads just couldn't get the hits in, you know, to try and congest that area. So mm. then, you know, Hugh had to push up, you know, because he was getting on too much ball last stage, and that was just creating a hole. So uh, it comes back to that kind of issue, I think, just around possibly bringing in some fresh legs a bit earlier, you know, probably would have helped. Yeah, and uh, one I just wanted to mention was uh, Ronan Cochran deservedly getting man of the match on the TV. Do you see some game yeah. in the field and yeah. maybe one and not one of the bigger names? Beyond the Kilkenny yeah. panel, would he, Oggy? No, no, the, um, Dara, the wing back, was on the Kilkenny panel there. Dara um, Cochran, yeah. yeah, he was on it. Um, I think he might have got man a match in the Club of Ireland. Um, he was on the panel there. He played a couple of National League games. Uh, but yeah, look, I think they won the midfield battle. You know, they got five points from midfield, um, you know, and that had a big bear on the game because, you know, at different stages they popped up for big scores, both Ronan and Brian and. Um, uh, Brian Cody and um, yeah it just you know and then as I said our lads when our lads started to tire in there they put in such a shift that their half back they just started taking over and, and, and with Richie Reid centre back he likes to as you say quarterback it. he likes to float around he's not you know he, he's not a natural defender but what he is he's a brilliant distributor of ball now he's a super hurler don't get me wrong but if you allow him get his head up and start pinging balls 
Yeah. He's, he's bringing balls into serious forwards, like, you know, and I yeah. thought we did really well putting him under pressure. He wasn't coming out with ball for large portions of the game. But at a crucial stage, you know, he started getting on a bit of ball. I think we went for a puck out. Stephen went for a puck out. We had a good matchup. Owen O'Shea was on him. He had it backed on. He caught the ball over Owen, played it down the wing. And we got, they got a score off us. And again, that was in that ser- same period of play. Small things, you know, but they're the small things you have to get right if you're going to... Yeah, I say, I say the, the bookmakers will be just looking at one team for the All Ireland Club again. Anyway, I'd say that's with due respect to all the great teams that have already won championships, uh, the, the Belly Gunners and the Kilmallocks uh, already, and whoever comes out of Dublin and, and the Rapparees, uh, I would think Belly Hale will be looming large. But therefore, you know, whether whether Thomas has come out in Galway yet, we'd have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, they, they seriously yeah. are. Uh, a major force you, there. You mentioned to, to James O'Connor there, Jack's our uh, coach. Ryan, he's made a yeah. water for there. He's made a big impression, I'd say, with Belly Hale, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, look, coming in after Henry, you, you could be forgiven for saying, are you mad? You know, two club all Ireland. Yeah. Like, where do you go from there? But he's done a great job, you know, and I think, um, yeah, no, look, a bit like Henry maybe with Gallo, he knew he had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of talent to work with, you know, and, these lads have been on the road for, you know, geez, for the last decade, you know, and it's just, I suppose it, it's not about coming in and trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just keeping this, <laughs> keeping the ship steady, you know, and you have enough leaders in there as well, you know, to, to keep kind of, you know, things on, on it. So he's done a great job in fairness to him, you know, because look, anytime you come into clubs, you know, set up, the players are sussing you out, you're sussing the players out. There's all that bit going on. And particularly when they were coming off the back of two club all Ireland's, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to, to try and, follow on from but no no look he's 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 done he's, he's done a great job you know and they're more so Uncle Kenny supporters Bally Hill supporters they expect they expect success you know so it's a it's a tough gig and uh, mm. I, I know I, I know he would have been sl- he, he was trill last year to win the county obviously but the fact that they couldn't go into a length of campaign in all Ireland and yeah. there were so many brilliant uh, teams that won the counties last year the big names nearly in every county came out it would have been a magnificent you know, Leinster or Munster campaign afterwards in an All Ireland series. So, thankfully, this year we're going to have that series, and uh, there's going to be a lot of big names in the pot in the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, yeah. It's going to be great, great, uh, definitely great, great club championship with Leinster or provincial Munster, Leinster, whatever, and then the All Ireland series. You know, by the are not going to be too far away from it. Yeah, they go on now, which is the beauty of the club. Like, is that most yeah. most Leinster Rangers great club in Carlow? Get a shot at Belly Hill, isn't that great? Like as well, you know what I mean? Like, like I mean, like, like you could never really conceive that Carlo would be Kenny, but at club level, does that little tinge probably won't happen? Belly Hill are so strong, but sometimes you know the um, the weaker county champions can have a chance, you know, against yeah, the, yeah. the big county. You, We've you, seen that. you, you might get a Mullinalakla, Mullinalakla, yeah, yeah. yeah Molinyakta, anyway, they pronounce it, yeah, Molinyakta. I can't, we can't yeah, expect you, problem, you can yeah, we can't expect you to pronounce um, anything outside the cock, really. Like, <laughs> we, we, we don't attempt to pronounce uh, the cock teams, like, we, we let you at that, like, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, and I suppose, look, before we go to the Little All Ireland, as he said, when he was late into his commentary duties yesterday, with the traffic, two lanes of traffic going into the park, um, <laughs> And all that, but uh, we may do a wrap up, TJ, maybe around the country. Just uh, um, great leash final, finals. I believe. Um, great leash final, yeah. And um, Buff Egan got locked into the toilets in in uh, <laughs> O'Moore Park, and there might have been a school of thought that he should have been left there, but <laughs> he made his way back to Bellacolla anyway. Uh, seemed to be a great final. Um, I think uh, Steve and Picky Mar and uh, Willie Dunphy. Swung it, they were outstanding. I, I think, um, yeah, didn't get we'll, to obviously can't see everything, but uh, great match. Got, yeah, we don't think I got five points to play, but just uh, my uncle was showing me last night. Actually, in fairness to Buff Egan, I think he had up on his page, mm. uh, the highlights and the scores from the game. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be on that social media platform, but the last were showing it to me last night. But uh, yeah, Clark Valley Collar won it 125 to 221, and believe it, there were seven points down at half time, and the game had kind of uh swung back to them and they, then they kind of seemed to sw- swing away again but yeah definitely Peaky Mar and, and Willie Dunphy Willie Dunphy got five points in play um, I was reading as well last night I think it's Clark Ballycala's first time 
doing back to back county titles. So yeah, so they retained it. So but yeah, great game. And I suppose back to the earlier point that I was making about the Leash County final, it was it appeared good crowd, yeah, um, good match, something great comeback. Just would be a great game maybe to catch up with during the weekend. Going back to yeah. the GA TV to have something like a Leash County final. I great. Think, we I know, I know, I know. In fairness to TG Carr, they will show the highlights tonight. Like, yeah, like you'd love maybe a bit of debate back to the studio. What did you think of that? And maybe have a leash guy coming in, and it would be great, right. no? To give it to, yeah. to give it the justice that it, that, that it deserves. And as I said, um, even the Westmead County final was played as well. And even just to kind of maybe watch that full game because you know yourself in a snapshot of two or three minutes, you see a couple of scores, and it doesn't give you a kind of a feel for the game. Like so, but to, to do all those. County finals, justice going forward, and in relation to other competitions, whether it's underage or Fitzgibbon Cups or football competitions and everything going forward, I'm saying GEA TV has to be on the way. I'm not sure if it's going to be done by the GEA or done by, let's say, an outsider and then it's paid for by the public. And then the GEA should be able to gain all of it, which would mean that everyone down the road and we can see all these county finals. But yeah, yeah, yeah. great win, great win. Growing for Raharney as well. I see Mr. Killian Dial was at it again. Two Killian, line, line balls. They, two line balls, they, yeah. I tell you, they're a good crowd at finals, Raharney. They don't when they get in there, they usually deliver, like, you know, um, beating Castletown Gagan there. Uh, he got 11 points altogether. Those Dial twins, I, I told you before about them, they, they came down to fail. I told you yeah. before the show was, uh, Jesus. <laughs> right. I went up to see, like, who are we playing the first round? That's the Westmead crowd. I uh, sure we'll win that, like uh, the Westmead crowd. Sure, we should be winning that. Jesus, these, these two twins under 14, they made Dr. Morphalus. But, uh, you know, great, great win for them there. Um, semi final, semi final, and awfully, TJ. Ken, Ken is there by his fingernails. Ken is there by his f- fingernails. Yeah, I saw, I saw the results. But before you even go to Affley, um, the final was in Armagh as well, Dale. And that yes. same story, right? At like Keedy, the actual unfortunately, they got beaten in the county final by um, Middletown. They were beaten 220 to 212. But we hosted Keedy Lab Derek in our club a number of years ago. And again, talking about super hurlers, passionate about hurling, really, really good. And we guys playing, we were playing Keedy Lab, Lab Derek in the first game from our man. The general perception would be that, that this team would be within your compass but they came down and just were way too strong for our and really 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 good hurlers and unfortunately they were saying a lot of them don't continue after the fail and that's yeah. supposed to be one of the reasons why the fail has been moved to under 15 to try and keep them playing a bit longer but again unfortunately for Keedy and I know some of the guys Paul and Glass, a huge mother walked it up there in hurling and unfortunately they last out to Middleton, Middleton yeah, we, again. We- we don't like Keedy, uh, TJ and Clark Castle. Um, we're we're twinned with um, Cook Cullions in our Mass City. Oh, they're yeah. great rivals. For this <laughs> great rivals, massive, yeah. yeah, massive, massive rivals. But you, I often went up there, present the medals and the tournament. We we do it with Ron Moore ourselves, Ron Moore Watford ourselves, and Cook Cullions. And it goes to Clark Castle one year. All the families host the kids and the mentors, and it's a brilliant weekend. Like. It's nearly better when it's away, <laughs> when it's in Watford or in our yeah, yeah, But um, yeah, yeah. yeah, we traditionally hear that we don't like Keedy. But that's that's oh, the yeah. usual thing. That's the usual well, thing, isn't it? All, all, all I can say to you, uh, Delo, is a lovely crowd, lovely bunch of nah, people, yeah. and, and no. fanatical hurling people. Huh? Yeah, no, 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 no. And while we're on that, you know, again, I, I finally wouldn't hear too much about, but a great report on it. The exam writing, Mark, you highlighted last week, the Tyrone final. Um, Carrick Moore beating our friends in Owen Rua, Fantasy Hurling men uh, beating in the final there. I think the feeling was that Carrick Moore would be a bit stronger uh, than Dungannon in it, like, and they did. They beat him 16 9. Um, so hard luck to the lads there. Well, well done to Carrick Moore. I'm not sure about that. Uh, we'd have great, old, obviously, relations with the lads. Um, and Rhinas and Cool Derry setting up two of our great old sure. pals in Brian Carroll still doing the business for Cool Derry and Ken uh, leading Rhinas. Uh, two great games again, I think. Very tight. Uh, was it um, one eighteen to twenty points? The first one and the second one was uh, very tight as well. With uh, Shin Rowan coming right back at Cool Derry as well, we haven't been nine points down. But uh, so that sets up an interesting one there. Can 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 uh, Ryan has won two county championships in the one year? Um, and uh, that brings us on. Then I think am I leaving out anyone, TJ? I think we're done. I think we're done. Thanks, Brian. That's Brent. it for today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for being hugging. We can all go now. <laughs> Mark, Mark, we got we got contrasting games uh, in in the Rebel County. It's fair to say. I, I thought, you know, um, first game. Watch back the highlights now. But I was trying to keep an eye on it. But I was I was locked on to the Kilkenny final. I have to say, but Jesus, there were scores coming from everywhere. 
And then the second one sat down, relax, watch it. And I thought it was tense and it was it was your typical county semi final, wasn't it? It was about all about well, getting there and, and again the Glen yeah. old masters get a job done again, like. Unbelievable. It was Glenn to the corner, I would have to say. They stifled Sarles from the get-go. They probably played on Sarles' weaknesses, which would be they have a lot of lads, a lot of young lads who haven't won county finals or haven't been in county senior finals. The Glenn have gone into their sixth county final in eight years and they toughed it out for the 62, 63 minutes. And... In fairness to Shani McGrath and co-commentary had mentioned before the game and after the first water break, they just want to keep this one tight and if they keep it tight and stay in the game for as long as possible, that there's a good chance that the Glen would come to the fore near the end. And like, this is Mark, the third Mark, match in a row, Mark, they know, that they have toughed it Shani, out like. Mark, Shani said at the, at the water break and there were two points to five down, very happy now who where the Glen are. <laughs> I just thought, like, <laughs> geez, Shani. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, like, Sales have been putting up kind of 224, roughly speaking, in most of their matches. So the fact that they were held to five points in the first quarter, eight points at half time, eight points to seven, the Glen must have been delighted, you know. But, like, the big, I suppose, the big talking point in the event, and we covered this last weekend, um, was whether Hoggy would have the red card rescinded that he that he got against the McKilly, which was correctly Jesus. rescinded. It was important. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, one eleven, one five, today, and the goal he got was an absolute rocket straight after half time. And it was exactly what the Glen needed, you know. They just needed a little bit of a kick to get in front. And you know, if you're if you're the Sarah sideline, Myers and uh, Peter Queeley are involved in them, and given kind of five or six minutes of instruction, the next time you can see the goal of the first attack of the game, kind of blows the whole thing open, but. Sales, Sales will be disappointed, Dale, that they didn't cut loose. And, and Jack O'Connor, who has a, a great in the county season, hasn't had a great club season, was absolutely brilliant for what? 50 minutes of the game. He was brilliant now. He got four points in play, but every one of them, he picked him up and took on the man and went past him. He, Jesus, he certainly must be the fastest man in Holland at the moment because he, he got, he got, he he got, got one super score. Right? Like, he got one score there in front of the stand. He took, he took the puck out, remember, in the left half back position. And he just mm. squared squared up his man, right? And just yeah. burnt it, didn't he? <laughs> uh, it was ghastly, TJ, because he looked at him and said, right, okay, I go on the outside, so... And he just went outside him. Oh, and he just moved away, like, it was just... And it was wide and all the time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark, yeah. first of all, a couple of questions. How did Hoggy get off? CCTV. Oh, video, yeah. video, video. Uh, behind the, go behind the goal. Camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, in fairness, the county board I think made it available, and you know, rightly so to be honest with a teacher, because you know you must write around at the end of the day, and he was wrongly sent off as it comes out now, and the CCTV I think has shown that he didn't strike John Cronin. It's some game. That's the like one five from play. Yeah, but and the goal. But, but he was brilliant, teacher. Like I mean, and I like, I couldn't understand how Sarah's. I mean, William Carney was left on him for probably most of the game. Conor Sullivan picked him up later on, but he got. Couple of balls played into him right on the outside, and you know how once he gets a half the yard on you, he has the ball in his hand. He'll give you that shimmy left or right, and you don't and you don't know which way he's going. But once he sees the goal as well as his left or right, his wrists are unbelievable. He is just he's very very accurate. But it it was a real performance for the ages of the Patrick yesterday. Now he was yeah, brilliant. I heard, I heard Patrick say that typical Patrick Horgan score, like the one over the left shoulder, yeah. which it was the goal. Um, did you see the goal the other day? Like he basically he, he he had the ball right, and he was kind of running in, and it looked like as if he was going to take a point, right? But yeah. The, the defender Hoggy, he just went to hook him, right? Because he thought he was going to hook, him. and then it was like very split second, right? Hoggy like realized the defender lost his hurley, right? And right. then in this last second, right, he decided. To have a go for the goal, the, go the goalkeeper wasn't expecting it then because it looked like it was going to be an easy point. And your man lost his hurley and then he changed his mind. But like, there's probably the win in the game, it was definitely. And he definitely had top spin on it as well. Like, you know, the, you know, the way he strikes those 21s and the penalties in the past, yeah, underneath yeah, the crossbar. Yeah, like yeah. your man in goal, Kennedy, never even flinched, never, no. never stirred. Now, the gas thing about the whole thing is that, um, the lights came on straight after. The goal was scored, and there was only half the lights on. So we were in darkness. 
and the black rock in and we've beautiful lights on the other side like so it was just it was it was electric i must say but it i again the two downies and brian mylan in the half back line for the glen were unbelievable animal donovan a probably a lesser known player was very good in the middle of the field and dean brasnan was very consistent as well but it was a pure glen glen performance so they really toughed it out you know yeah, and what and you know what strikes me, Mark, is maybe they're, they're I like you was look at the last water break and you were commenting on the tactics board being out for sales and by the same and I said it maybe today in the column like that there was Graham Kellen inside he'd so full of cut by this by the neck <laughs> inside of the last water break, like and you know, there was a couple of moments near the end, Robert Downey made one catch in injury time, like and it was so it was really- it was a traditional, oh, well, Jesus, I'm going up for it. No, he drove it out over the sideline, down the other end of the field. But, it, I mean, it was a grand place to drive it to him one way that you were defending a sideline cut way back. Uh, but I, I just think, some, you know, sometimes in these games, all the tactics, all the... And it just comes down to maybe that, that fight and that know-how. And their level of consistency now in the last nine or ten years, the Glen has, has gone to super heights, like... Yeah, like I have to say, like so, Ian Lynham has taken over the team. Richie Keller would be would have been the manager for we say five the last five county finals. Um, and like Ian, Ian has has was Richie's um, right hand man, I suppose his coach and stuff. That so it's great for Ian as well. Um, because I suppose when you're when you're a coach, you like to step up to the manager's plate at some stage as well. So that was a big thing, but. You know, David Cunningham and Graham Cannon, two great warriors as well, two kids hogs that played for the Glen. Like they, they were hardy boys and they were playing, like, you know, and they've they certainly added to the back of the staff there as well in the Glen. But like you're talking about Downey and about the simple things. Like we saw it at the county level. He has a very, very good hand. And yesterday he was excellent again. Anything under the dropping ball, he was really, really good as again, you know. So but he's his younger brother Owen is is a player for the future, I would think, Anthony. He right. has plenty of ability now. He was cornerback on the under-20 team that won the All-Ireland as well this year. He's a good lad now, and he's plenty of okay. pace as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so set, th- set up a county for, Yeah, sorry. They'll take a bit of beating, Mark, but uh, the other one, I suppose, now after the people, do you know, uh, my good pal John Milan was uh, telling me to black, back black rock for the Munster Club. But uh, I, was, when I was looking at the scoreline and one said, I said, well, I hope you didn't have too much on that. But uh, the back to back can be it's hard to do obviously in a, in a county that's so equal nearly in the in the standards. Uh but I, I like Middleton have an awful lot of big names on the team and I suppose after the last day we we spoke about Conor Lee Han and, and maybe could Kieran Kickson have another look. Jesus, he came up with a few marquee scores and we, we were on about the Jack O'Connor score and he got a very similar one, albeit not at the same pace under the stand mark. So just Lehan throwback, yeah. like wasn't he? he? Got four from yeah. play, I think. Four from play, ten, 10 overall, but he was he was excellent now from the get go. And we mentioned the last, like could could he have something to offer? Ken mentioned about you know could he have the impact of the ten or fifteen minutes near the end of the game? Certainly, it's probably worth exploring uh, if a, if a player is willing to do that, put in the hard graft and the tile the, the tile is required to, to know you're only going to be giving maybe ten or fifteen minutes. You know, that's, that's a conversation that Kim thinks about might have with him. Like, there obviously has been a lot of changes in the cop backroom staff in the last couple of weeks since we last spoke. Noel Furlong has gone in as a coach. Pat Mulcahy has been added to the management. Jock Cunningham has, has gone sideways. And Gary Keegan is back as well. So lots of changes in Kim thinks since last year in, in, in charge at the moment. And anyway, so typical cop. Typical cop. You forgot about the clear huh? man gone. Typical Cork, you forgot about that's the right. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, Dela. <laughs> Christy, Christy. Um, yeah, I didn't. I think in an article in the Echo there, I didn't get a chance yeah. to read it though. But you know, Very so good. there's that that changes. But I think if Connor puts another performance together like he did uh, yesterday, well, then maybe he may want uh, a call back and stuff like that. But you'd have to say that the performance in Midland was probably the best performance they've produced in at least a decade. Everyone to a man was outstanding from the keeper right up to um Sean O'Mara, Connor Fowler, who come in um the start of his first starting uh, game yesterday. Well, like two with uh Karma Buzan, who would be kind of a you know, youngish, a youngish player, plenty of pace, got a goal and three points yesterday, added to the four points he got from play in the quarter final, and he got four points from play against Sars as well in the, in a, in a, on a beaten team. So 
he has done really, really well. Luke Farrell was brilliant yesterday, even though he mightn't have scored a whole pile, but he was on a huge amount of ball, got fouled umpteen times, and probably created the last goal scoring opportunity where he could have tapped the ball over the bar, but he saw Ross O'Regan coming in. He parted. No, there was a bit of a fortuitous finish to the, to the ball, obviously, because I said Gavin Connolly and goals thought he was going to hit a rocket. He'd gone to ground. And when he went to strike the ball, the defender hooked him and the ball trickled in off the line. So, like, you need yeah. a bit of look to win everything. But, yeah. um, I saw the highlights, Mark. Like, the whole game it was a very open game. Like, it, was, it was loads of great scores. Touching kind of the hand first, I'd be a fan. I think he definitely has something to offer Cork. I don't think that you can leave that quality behind in whatever form he comes, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, or 70 minutes. I think he has something to offer. But 4.22 to 3.19, I suppose, tells its own story in terms of how the game was played. You would be definitely, yeah. definitely questioning. And I heard you questioning the full back. Well, you, you said Mark, he might have been fouled even for the first goal, like, right? But like, some of the defence bordered on the kind of comical, I was, I was, I was going to say, rather than bad. Like, it was just stuff that you wouldn't see happening anywhere. It was just mad, one mad score after another, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, it was it was like the goals, seven goals in any match, he'd uh, kind of <coughs> tell you a little bit about defending, I suppose, in some respects. But, um, like, Perky Cueve is is in great shape, I would say. It's, like, it's still top of the ground. The ball is moving really yeah. quickly there. And um, I'd say both, both teams don't have a whole pile of tactics, I would say. Black Rock, play a traditional game. You know, good, strong, physical team. They'll go along more often than not. Um, but definitely Gary Norbuck, who's a really has been a teeth, teeth tough defender, probably lacks a yard or two. Got exposed on the first goal. Normally would have would have won that ball. It broke the Karma Kuzan, but the minute the ball went in, I said, "That's gone." And this is going to be just because Karma Kuzan is like a hair with a ball, like you know. So um, that that was a problem for them. Like well, one um, of the goals, I'm not sure if it's, did you see did you see that goal, Brian? The one was it the second goal or the third goal in Middleton got where the keeper miss hit the puck out straight to the Middleton midfielder, right? He basically was having a shot for a point, right? Where he kind of more or less miss hit it. And there was two black rock defenders, right? Two of them on the 21 yard line, right? So the ball was about to win over his head, and he just basically just overreached. He knocked the ball back down, right? And as he did that, the other defender came and hit him, right? And the two of them took each other completely out of it, right? Which left two Middleton players inside the 14 yard line. It was just, it was an unbelievable goal to concede, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. TJ, you, you took the words out of me. I was. So I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Was four twenty two, three nineteen? Like, was there anyone defending at all? You know, and <laughs> not, not, I, like I haven't seen the match. I must uh, say, say that straight up. But it would strike me that uh, Middleton, you know, and I, I would have played against them once or twice. They like that kind of open, you know, free flowing game. If it's a shootout, it obviously played into their hands. Like they're surely not going to get that sort of space against Glenn in the in the <laughs> in the final. Yeah, you're right. I said, right, you're right. I said, uh, like, you know. Both teams know exactly what's coming now. And, like, in fairness to the Glen, last year's county final now, they hurled out of their skins against that rock and they put up a big mm-hmm. score as well. So don't be underestimating. I know the way they've, they've won. They beat Newtown, um, they beat in McKilly, and they beat Stairs by a point to point to two points, all in similar fashion. But they can step on the gas as well as they did in the county final last year. So you could get sucked into a fact that they said this is going to be a dog fight the next five things will open up for them. So the county finals, in, in, in some respect, have a habit of taking on a life of their own in Cork. And a lot might depend on who might be ref in the game because there are some refs are inclined to leave it go and then there are some refs that are inclined to blow it off for that more. So the referee, the, whoever's going to get the finals could have a big bearing on, on, the, on the result. But I have to say Middleton really surprised an awful lot of people in the county last year. They hadn't really set very high standards so far. They hadn't hurled as well as they did. Just, they hurled out of the skin. And Tommy O'Connell at centre-back was really the point, the brilliant. The point he got. Ah, unbelievable. Like he mm-hmm. missed 50, 60 yards up for the field from centre-back and hit it off his left. He's a real quality player. Sean O'Leary Hayes was good as well. It'll be interesting to see will Middleton put him or will they put Luke Deneen on Patrick Harvin in the final. Luke has been a very solid fullback all year long, and he has 
got most of the responsibility of mapping the better players. So that'll be a question like Simon Kenneth and Christy Rings Benson will be playing as well in the full forward. And so I, I think the two of them would match up against each other. But who would take who? I'd say would be the biggest question there. Um, but like, like the um, the goal and Niall, Niall Cashman scored. Um, like I, I heard you reference him, Kyle Hayes. Like again, Niall Cashman got it in the right half back position. Stole it all the way up the field, right? And, uh, yeah. and Brian's thinking, where were the defenders again? Right? <laughs> but again, like he, he must have sold out 70, 80 yards, did he? I, I actually saw it back last night, TJ. I think it was Michael O'Halloran gave him a hand pass on the 70 yard line. And he kept going and kept going. And, kept, and next of all, he's inside the 14 yard line. Bang, <laughs> back in the yes. great finish. 14. Game back on, like, and then middle and go straight down the field, down the field yeah. and get another goal. <laughs> It was just incredible yeah. stuff, like you know. Well, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's Ben O'Connor on the line for Ben O'Connor and Andrew Fitzgerald for uh, Milton yeah. as well. And Jeff Fitzgerald, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, really want to look yeah. forward to the Little All Ireland two weeks time. The lights hopefully will be on. Um, I don't know who'll be doing the commentary. Uh, quote, quote of the the game yesterday was. Uh, Patrick Mulcahy, your commentary, he says, well, why would you be passing it when you have Patrick Horgan and was wide? I'd say it was the only wide. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, the other big news, can you hear me the other? Yeah. yeah. The, the other big news over the weekend, obviously, is on the senior A side of things, um, Nooses Town were seven points up and a man up at the last, last water break. And managed to stumble into a draw and can top one by eight or, eight or nine points in, in extra time. Um, but the other semi final is on next weekend between Bright Rovers and Fabro O'Neill's. And the one coming out of Fabro O'Neill's is that Declan Dalton had a serious injury in training Sunday morning. Now he's after scoring Ooh. 330 out of 562, so far in the championship for them. And it looks as though he's going to miss the semi final, which would possibly swing. He could swing it back towards Bright Rovers now in that situation. But it is a it is a local derby as well. They played each other last year, and Fabio Neils had a, had an easy victory. But Bright Rovers are a good bit better this year. But it's um, if if Darton has a serious injury as we think it is, he'll be out for a bit, you know. But both those finals again are going to be out of the park next time. So it's 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 a great day's. Hurling, and it's, it's. I hope that the crowds will come and support. There was there was a great atmosphere in Parkie Cueve yesterday. There was only six and a half thousand people paid in, but maybe kids. There, there might have been three or four thousand kids and stuff for that that, that are not accounted for. But um, we'd be just hoping that there would be a big crowd at the county final to create, create a great atmosphere. Everyone's just checking out there. See, Dickie Dalton will be out running this evening or something. I bet you he's fine. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> It's the Landers rubber man. <laughs> Decky Dalton. <laughs> Dalton. He don't figure of it. He don't figure of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man, like, well uh, the funny, the funny thing a fella said to me today, Jamal, he might be so bad they might play him in goals. He said, because <laughs> I can tell it if Decky was a great goalie. Any, any any progress, uh, TJ? Uh, then I got a call from um, New York actually during the week and uh, from an oh, we going over there? Of, the, of the podcast. Yeah, live yeah. show. So live show. The, invita- the, the invitation was sent was is, is on the way to you for a live show from New York. Eddie Wiley, Greg Kimalik, man. Um, so basically anybody who's going to New York and they need a chauffeur or being driven around the place, you can give Eddie a shout. But he's a big listener to the podcast, Stella, so he just wanted to give a shout out and say that we're welcome over there anytime. So I, oh uh, yeah, if we're, if we're going, we will, like yeah, I will travel. My, my old pal uh, over there, Johnny Kennedy, um, the pub there just won't come to me now. Oh, the long haul himself and Connor Sketches, yeah. they have a pub there. Yeah, yeah. They, I, Johnny has said it to me a few times. They lot live show on the long haul. What's the story? And want to give a shout out to our normal, our championship sponsors, Renault, uh, Paddy McGee, uh, Blessington for the first time in 38 years, won back the Wicklow um, senior football title yesterday with his nephew Whacker. As captain, uh, there could be a large day in Blessing today. <laughs> I'd say, will there be a large day in O'Loughlin's Hoagie? Yeah, I'd say that. Oh, look, I'd say it has to be done. The lads are what time is it? 
I know, just yeah, they're well on the <laughs> stage, I would say. Yeah. With Mick Galway, Mick Galway in the middle of them singing. Guaranteed. Listen, I left him in the club there last night. He was still going out of the Guaranteed. He'll be holding him. Oh, the the only thing is, no, no one wants to be getting in rounds with him. That's the only thing. He'll be avoiding that. <laughs> no, he'll kill you. He'll kill you. Oh, no, don't tell no. me. Don't tell me. I think I'm meeting him next weekend. So that could be a test of stamina. <laughs> yeah, he's loved. Golov. Golov is loved in Kerry. He's loved in Limerick. Uh, he's now loved in Kilkenny. And obviously, uh, he's, he's loved nationwide as well. But all he's done for us. Yeah, I look, yeah, he, uh, he's fantastic, and uh, his wife Joan is the head of the Camogie Club. Um, you mm. know, she, she's done and is doing fantastic work with, with on the Camogie side. You know, and is the real driving force there. But yeah, look, he's a he's some bio. Yes, <laughs> Hoagie, thanks for joining us. Uh, great stuff as always, lads. Uh, we talk to you next week, uh, Larry. Will you have a word with Tony there to see what he start out my Wi-Fi? Man, like, I mean, the show is going well, like, the Wi-Fi is killing me here. <laughs> the Wi-Fi is good in New York, Dale. Top class okay. in New York. And, and any Irish bars in London, we'd be willing to talk to them as well, and maybe Paris or anything like that, you know, so. Great stuff, lads. Uh, <laughs> we, we will travel, we will travel. Uh, we're not getting involved heavily in, in uh, coaching teams next year, so we will travel. Uh, Mark will probably be over there anyway for the Prix de l'Arc or something like that. And sure, TJ, uh, the Breeders' Cup could be New York next year, so we could maybe take in the two. The, the, the Breeders' Cup is on the bucket list, Dillo. Oh, TJ, did you, did you see that the Japanese had two winners at the Breeders' Cup? First time yeah. ever, am I right saying that? Correct, yeah. The Japanese win, yeah. We have a little and... bit of a connection coming here now, killer, <laughs> and killer, with the Japanese. <laughs> Ken Buds sure Ken Buds is on his way to Tokyo as we speak <laughs> <laughs> good stuff alright talk oh, to yeah. you so hello thanks Hoggy see you guys see you guys pleasure hello a, a, a grain of rice a, a grain of rice is going to tip the scale just remember that then. there's a small bit of a needle there now, come on Mayo you've got to get Andy Moran into the game we're missing what's the show we're missing what's the show then we're no longer the whipping boys of Munster!